All right, good afternoon, everybody, and what is today's topic? Well, we're going to talk about repurposing that 30-inch two-shelf service cart from Harbor Freight. So I had a friend of mine we were talking today because I got 20% off Father's Day weekend, which is pretty much generic about what they do all the time anyway, so it wasn't any great bargain and any reason to go running out there for any outstanding deal, but he had been looking for a service cart and said, hey, look, you know, with the discount, even though it's nothing thrilling, I'm going to pay right around 30 bucks and some change because I was thinking about going out and getting one. But he goes, I said, well, what are you going to use it for? And he goes, well, I'll put my tool chest on it instead of lugging it around when I'm working on, a, you know, the car out in the garage. He goes, you know, I could put it on top of the service cart and pull it around. I go, well, it's kind of wasting that one, uh, you know, that one shelf. I said, I got an idea because on the forum, somebody posted some pictures of a way that they repurposed one that they bought, which I thought it was a really good idea. I showed him the pictures, he got excited about it, so he went on out there and he got his cart, he paid right around $30 and some change for it. Let me show you the ad and then I'm going to show you what we did with it or how we went about repurposing it. Give me just a sec. Alright, here we go, this is the actual ad, $37.99, it's got 234 reviews. Everybody says it's a great little service cart. It's um, light duty. It's not, you know, made out of super thick gauge, you know, sheet metal or anything like that, but serves its purpose and everybody seemed to like it from the reviews. A couple of people, of course, have got complaints. One of them, well, the casters are cheap junk. Well, you can always, you know, while you're out there, not that you should have to, you shouldn't, but they do sell other casters that are more heavy duty. And if you find that you've overloaded it, and you're destroying the casters, you can easily put on new casters. But this is the cart that he bought. I'm going to change the picture. I'm going to put up a couple at a time. I'll discuss what he did and how he did it. And he copied the same, you know, pictures that I showed him that I'm now posting up here. You might want to do the same thing and find it handy, you know, for your garage or shop. So let me change the picture. We'll continue the conversation. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the one on the upper left. Now, what he did is he went out to the steel supply place here in town. Bought some inexpensive angle iron. I think he bought it in a 10, 20 foot section. I mean, he'll use it for other projects. Came home, he cut these vertical pieces, marked the holes, drilled them. Now you might have to stop at Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up a different size bolt. He told me he did because it was a lot easier than trying to monkey around forcing other things to work or to fit just to get a little bit longer bolts. So. Then he turned around and he has a drill press. You can use a hand drill. After he marked the holes, he drilled them out. He rebolted the uprights. Then, um, that's just the way he did it. I asked him so I could describe it in detail in the video. Then he went ahead and he created this rectangular piece on top out of the angle iron. Okay, so at that point, he ground down all of the welds. He went ahead and cleaned everything up, wiped it down with acetone mask things off and he created what was over here on the right he painted it red to match the service card looks pretty good it almost looks like you know it was bought that way now at this point you have a decision to make while you're out of the steel supply pace you could have taken a look and seen if you had any cutoffs in the way of plate steel or any kind of thick steel you wanted to use now that's one option i agree i wouldn't do it that way what i encouraged him to do and what he ended up doing was while you're over at Lowe's or Home Depot getting the bolts, see if they have any cutoffs or any half sheets of like three quarter inch plywood. You could get away with half inch plywood because you do have, you know, from the angle iron, you've got those supports all the way around the perimeter of it on the inside. You manage to get three quarter inch, look for OSB, just look for any kind of plywood. You can always sand it down real well. And we'll discuss that in a minute. Let me show you the finished product first, then we'll discuss the finish. Okay, so here we go on the upper left here. Now, he got some plywood, put it on there just like this guy did in the picture. Now, I got this picture off of the forum because it's where I got the idea from originally anyway. But if you come across OSB, any kind of plywood out there, I mean, go ahead and get it because you're probably going to rough and damage the surface anyway over time. Who cares, right? So you turn around, bring it home. Now... His was a real nice grade, uh, it was a cutoff. So I told him, hey, sand this thing down, you know, like 220, let's say. Use a random orbital sander, sand it up real good. Put a couple of coats of polyurethane on it. It'll look sharp, it'll look good, and you're home free. Now there's another way of doing it on some of my bench tops. Um, I use linseed oil, and you know, I just coat it. 
it keeps things from sticking on it and stuff and it's easy to maintain like every six eight months a year whatever you know you can thin the linseed oil out a little bit and you can use paint thinner or something thin it out and you can do another wash coat over the top of it and it keeps the surface really nice looking keeps it from getting damaged keeps the wood from warping splitting stuff like that the linseed oil kind of puts a little bit of oil back into the wood anyway over on the far right you can see he put his uh, drill press on there and his grinder and it made a nice little pull around thing and he put a hole in the middle of it uh, for his cords to go through not what i would have done but it works for him which is fine i would want to keep the surface solid let the cords drape over the back or however they want but this is the way that the guy did it on the forum it works for him it's a nice little cart with a nice little work uh, workbench type thing on top if you want to make it for your home or garage. Okay, any questions? Um, okay, the one question that popped up is, uh, can I do anything else by adding on to it? Sure. Yes, once you have the angle iron on there and the angle iron frame, you can create baskets if you have a welder and a way to cut metal. You can create hooks going around it to drape cords. You can do all kinds of things with it. This was just to give you an idea that you can take this $30 card if you use the discount coupon. You can repurpose it. You can make it into something, you know, more custom made for you and your shop. You can do all kinds of things to it. Like I said, baskets and hooks and all kinds of things. Um, you know, because now you got a good piece of thick steel to weld to and you don't just have sheet metal. That's my suggestion. I hope you find it helpful for your garage or shop. I'm the home handyman. I hope you click subscribe, give me a thumbs up, keep following me. I'll see you folks on the next video. Bye-bye.